Hello and welcome to Metro Arts. I'm your host, Sofia Sanchez. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business, from fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we'll feature jazz saxophonist Cameron Cullers, special effects makeup artist Donna Terwilliger, and dance performer and instructor Christy Faulkner. <laughs> We'd like to welcome saxophonist Cameron Cullers to Metro Arts Detroit. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Good. How did you come to play saxophone? Uh, it all started with my father. Um, I actually started playing music when I was six, and I started off on a clarinet, and when I turned 10 years old, he uh, said it's time for me to play something a little more yeah. difficult, so I started on the sax. Nice. As a musician, has your love always been jazz? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say jazz. Actually, when I was younger, my dad kind of played jazz all the time, so I was kind of sick of it. Oh, really? Uh, it wasn't until I got older and mm -hmm. I really got into it and started listening to it and studying it more um, and, and kind of made that genre become a part of me. Nice. So if you could collaborate with any artist, who would it be? Wow, that is really difficult. <laughs> um, <sighs> do they have to be living? No, why not? Okay, yeah. uh, I would definitely have to say John Coltrane. Uh, he's a masterful, masterful musician, especially saxophonist, and I would just love to just be, be an understudy. Oh, cool. Yeah. Where can we learn more about you? Uh, social media, Cameron Colors on Facebook, uh, also on Instagram, it's BigCam underscore 32, and then you can go to uh, my YouTube page, which is A-Land Media Productions. All right, nice. And you're about to play a few songs on set today. Tell us what we're going to hear. Well, one of the pieces that you're going to hear is called Somewhere, um, and it's just a... Um, just a motivational, inspiring piece that I just kind of, collection of thoughts, just kind of created it kind of out of the cosmos. All right, well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. Sure. You're watching Metro Arts Detroit, produced at Wayne State University. <laughs>
next guest on Metro Arts is special effects makeup artist. Let's welcome Donna Terwilliger to the Midtown studio at Wayne State. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. You're a self-taught special effects makeup artist. It's very impressive. How would you describe what you do? I am the person behind the scenes of movies or modeling shoots, anything like that, that will take an appliance, apply it, apply paint, and make that person become their own character. How did you get your start? You had a very interesting history. Yeah, um, I actually uh, started out with set construction scenic painting. Um, and I decided one day to buy a little tiny baby makeup kit. And I used that kit to do just some things on my own children. Got around, pictures of it got around, and the next thing I know, I'm working on films. <laughs> <laughs> That's Something wonderful. Right, yeah. And you weren't always working in film. No, I used to be an accountant. That's I know, crazy. I made a jump from accounting to special effects makeup. And yeah. you had never worked on any set prior. No, That's really no, impressive. No, no. So what is your preferred medium? Silicone. 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 I love silicone. Um, it's not for every appliance. I mean, you don't, you, there's a lot of appliances you're better off with foam because it's hmm. lighter. But for smaller things, I like using silicone because it's translucent. It can blend into your skin perfectly. I hmm. mean, you'll never see an edge. It's beautiful. It's, I love it. For those who don't know, what exactly is silicone? It is a fast drying rubber. Okay. Uh, most people would know silicone by like the baking dishes. Okay. And those are probably, I, I want to say maybe that's like an 80 shore. And what I use is a zero shore, 10 shore, so it feels more like human skin. Okay. Who or what inspires you? Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> I grew up with people like KMB Makeup, so that's Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nicotero from The Walking Dead, Howard Berger, Stan Winston, Rick Baker, and every time I would see one of their movies, I would have to watch every behind the scenes shot I could get oh my, my eyes gosh. on. And so yeah, I mean, I've, I've always had the interest there. I never knew how to go about doing it. Mm. And when the film studio started opening up around here, I made the crazy leap from accounting to makeup. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, so you've worked on a lot of feature length and short film yes. sets. What were those experiences like? Um, <clears throat> a different experience for every movie. Some mm -hmm. of them I had amazing times, very fun. Um, some of them were higher budget, so there was more things like pyrotechnics brought in, so mm -hmm. those were always great. And then there are those that I am the only makeup artist, sure. and they become highly demanding. That's and, a lot of work. Yeah, so yeah. it's you know it's a given. You know, it's which each each one is different. Sure. Do you have a particular genre that you're more drawn to? Horror. Horror. I love anything horror. I like sci-fi. I'm just now dabbling into anything other than horror, just yeah. to see if I can do it. You know, yeah. I mean, because right now. I am known as like the zombie queen of Michigan, and I want to be more than zombies. You know, I want sure. to do something other than, you know, so. You brought a model in studio today. Can yeah. you tell us what we're going to see? It is my very first attempt at trying anything other than horror. She is kind of a sci fi character, um, maybe an aquatic type alien. Okay. In a sense, kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, it's my first attempt at trying something other than horror. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So walk me through your process here. Okay. Let's start with that. Okay. First up, we have what you could call a life cast. Okay. You can do a cast of a person's face, or in this instance, I did a cast of an armature I had at home. Okay. Her cast is actually over here. All right. But we'll go with this one. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make a clay sculpt. So when you start, you lay them down in little beads. Okay. And as you get, you know, the what you would like it to start looking like, you can start fine-tuning it. So this is like a fine-tuned piece. When you're done, you make a wall the whole way around your piece, into the eyes, everything. So that makes sure that whenever you do use whatever medium, it mm -hmm. will flow into those empty crevices that you just made. And your objective is to create some texture or? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. And then dimensions. we're gonna cover, you would cover this whole thing in what I use, I use UltraCal. Okay. But you could use silicone itself to make that mold. What is UltraCal? UltraCal is a gypsum type cement. Okay. So I use that to make all of my molds. And when you're done, you're gonna take it off and then whatever you, texture you've put down, you'll have right here. You clean this mold off, you clean this mold out, put some kind of release agent on them both, put whatever medium you wanna use in this one. Okay. Then you would smash these two together. Well, the face that this one would go go this way. Okay. 
When so that sort of becomes like a negative almost. Yes, and then you so you have together. positive, negative. Then when you're done, this will be your outcome. So you'll have a piece like this. This is silicone. Okay. And the inside wow, is so really thin. it's really thin, yeah. Very thin. You would cut all these excess weight pieces away. These are your negative spaces. These all go away. And then what you're left with is what she's wearing right now. Wow. So this is actually her face cast. Nice. And then this is the piece that we made her. And you can see how thin. Now you can see my finger right. through it. Wow. You know, you have to be careful. It doesn't even rip, you know. And how do you adhere it onto her face? I use um, either uh, Prose-Aid. Okay. Or sometimes if I'm using silicone pieces, I'll use silicone itself oh, wow. as a glue to put it down with. And then when you're done, you know, after you, you make sure everything's down right, the way you want it, then you start with makeups. Like these are alcohol palettes. They're made with 99% alcohol as they're activated with that. Um, they stay on. And what's good. the advantage of using an alcohol palette versus they're another They're very kind? translucent. Okay. You can put them on as thin as you want or as thick as you want. Um, very see-through translucent and uh, they'll stay. They're, they're only activated with 99% alcohol. Wow. So they'll stay on. You can have underwater scenes, everything. Really? They're going to stay until you take it off. Yeah. Talk me through some of these details because there are some really intricate details. Um, well, this here was made with hot glue sticks. I just literally laid wow. lines of hot glue sticks on like her cast mm -hmm. and painted it black, added some sparkle. And then her ears. The ears yeah. are, believe it or not, they are angel wings. No kidding. That I folded in half <laughs> and then just painted. And then these are just pieces of some kind of tubing that I picked up at a fabric store. That's wonderful. I just kind of threw it all together like a it's last kind of DIY, thing, but it looks you know? really professionally done, you oh, know. Thank I mean. you. So yeah. where can we learn more about you? Um, right now, I mean, I'm, a, I'm on Facebook, okay. you know, so uh, I have a lot of my work on Facebook. I have an IMBD credit, you know, so I have my own page on there. Great. Um, but yeah, that right now, that's about it. But All right, great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. Thank you. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. And now let's welcome Artistic Director of Christy Faulkner Dance to Metro Arts. Hello, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course. How did you get started dancing? Um, I actually started dancing when I was about three years old. My mom put me in tap dance classes. Oh, no kidding. So I started tap dancing. I stayed in the studio all throughout growing up, up until high school, um, doing all kinds of dance, jazz, ballet, lyrical, hip hop. Oh my gosh, um, all sorts of things. Yeah. Everything, yeah. everything that you could possibly think of. Um, and then went to college and studied dance seriously once I got into, into college. Nice. What sorts of other theater or performing arts have you explored? I uh, actually was a musical theater major okay. when I was in college, and I did a lot of musical theater when I was in high school. I was in the Glee Club, and which was cool, by the way, nice. when I was in high school. <laughs> um, I was in the Glee Club and did a lot of singing in musical theater. I did a lot of plays. Um, yeah, I just love the arts. Love so how did, how did you start your company? Um, well, I went to the college at Brockport in New York okay. for my grad work. And I got my uh, MFA in choreography and performance from the college at Brockport and decided that choreographing was really something that I loved. I mean, I knew up till then that I wanted to dance and work in, with students. Um, I thought that I wanted just solely a path of working in the university. Mm -hmm. And then I found that choreography was really something that was incredibly important to me. And so I decided to come back to Detroit and make my company's home here, found some dancers to work with, and the rest is The history. rest is history. <laughs> Fantastic. One of your recent projects was Four Letter Word. Tell me about that. Yeah, Four Letter Word is a 50 minute long piece that That's is, a long time. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a nice evening length work um, that is set to music of the Motown era. So some classic love songs that I grew up with myself. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, it's a, a piece that really plays with how we look at gender and relationships and sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily with a real serious eye. There are some serious sure. tender moments, but there's also a lot of witty, really kind of funny, humorous sections as well. Cool. Where have you performed? Um, we've done a lot of performing in the Metro Detroit area. 
Um, we've also performed in Ohio in a few places, in New York City in a few places, Western New York. We're really branching out right now, trying to um, tour the company with these new works that we have, this four-letter word, and then Cirque Noir okay. kind of forms an evening-length performance for us. Cool. Where can we learn more about you? Our website is www.christyfaulknerdance.com, and we also have a Facebook and an Instagram and a Twitter. You have a few dancers here in studio. Can you tell us what we're about to see? Yeah, so uh, we brought two pieces to show today. The okay. first is Cirque Noir, which is um, one of my newest dances that we're creating with the company. It's a really whimsical kind of piece with balloons. Ooh, it's really fun. Nice. And then the second is a small section, just a little snippet from Four Letter Word, which okay. is an evening length work that we created. All right, well, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Sure. Up next, let's enjoy the artistic performances from Christy Faulkner Dance.
We hope you enjoyed today's show. I would like to thank our guests, Cameron Cullors, Donna Tewilliger, and Christy Faulkner for being here today. Remember, you can watch any of our shows online at MetroArtsDetroit.com and find us on social media. I'm your host, Sophia Sanchez, reminding you to seek out inspiration and explore the arts in your community. Mm -hmm.